Hello transport nerds and fellow planners and welcome back to Talking Planning. So today is the day. What I'm doing is something you've all been asking for and it's my first proper Newcastle transport review. So I've been in Newcastle about a month now and I've had a busy time. I've been working but I have managed to squeeze in a few chances to travel on board some local buses, trains, trams and ferries. And I think it was time today to look at a review. I should point out that, unfortunately, I'm not using public transport on a daily basis or quite as frequently as I was back in Brisbane because for work, I'm required to drive and I have a car for my work duties. So, most of this public transport usage is all for leisure and all because I want to actually go and experience this network myself. So anyway, let's jump into today's video and let's have a look at our first Newcastle bus. For what seems like a very conventional bus, I've always found the subject of today's video particularly fascinating. As a kid and a young adult, I often spent time in Sydney with my family, but I never had the chance to head up to Newcastle until 2020. Prior to July 2017, Buses in Newcastle were also operated by State Transit New South Wales, who, for the most part, bought custom coaches vehicles with bus techs starting to enter the picture around 2015. Most other Volgren products with State Transit were articulated buses or their sole tag axle Scania K310UB. This made the Volvo B7s with Volgren CR228L bodies incredibly unique to State Transit now Newcastle Transport. So, that's my story about why I've always been interested in these particular buses. So let's move on to specifications. The Garden Variety B7 RLE features Volvo's D7E motor, pushing out 290 horsepower. By my guess, this one's got the 4-speed VoIF, although many came with a 6-speed ZF which was probably a bit better. But while we wait to leave Cardiff Station, check out this bus's brother, fitted with a Bustech VST body. Let's have a listen quickly now. So now that we're underway, let's talk about how State Transit decide to spec these buses. Unlike the typical flat bonded windows of most Volgren products, these have framed windows. You'll also find the State Transit graffiti style fabric, a State Transit specification CCTV display, and of course, dual leaf rear doors. This makes them quite different to the B7s in Brisbane from the same era. Considering this is my first Newcastle based bus review, I think it's worth making some general statements about a month of travel across the local transport network. I actually think Newcastle's bus network is pretty decent, but graffiti is a problem across the fleet. Just look at the panels directly above and below these windows, which have been tagged badly. It's just not a nice look. Sadly, this trend is across the whole fleet from the earliest Volvo B10 BLEs through to the latest B8 RLEs. My pet peeve graffiti type window etching is also in full force on board Newcastle buses. Given the condition of buses at State Transit in Sydney, I'd say that graffiti was an issue in Newcastle before the Keolis Downer takeover. But on the plus side, it seems that the trams, trains and ferries are all in better condition. Footage for today's videos comes from on board 2385 ST 
and 2448ST. These B7s sport the state transit style number plates from their former days at Newcastle Buses and Ferries instead of Keolis Downer, who are now responsible for Newcastle Transport. Apart from recent former state transit buses, most vehicles have MO plates, which stands for Motor Omnibus, a term that you're not going to hear very often anymore. Unfortunately, as it was raining for most of the day, the camera struggled to get through the rain droplets that built up on the windows. But fortunately, I managed to snag a couple of my favourite styles of shot as the speed cleared some of the raindrops off the windows. As we head past a few shop frontages, the reflection of 2448 ST shows up in the windows, albeit obscured by a few water droplets. Neither bus was in stellar shape, but at least the first one I caught seemed to be far less graffiti ridden. It is truly a shame because I've always found these specific buses interesting and seeing them not being looked after is always a shame. As a planner, I've always advocated for using public transport, but sadly, buses in poor condition make it very difficult to defend. And given that I have to drive to work, it really makes it less tempting to swap the car for the bus once you've finished for the day. Trust me though, I am going to keep trying to make public transport a better and more convincing alternative, one Opal card tap at a time. Since I'm now at the junction, I think it's time to finish up this review and let this bus head on its merry weather way. <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>